Led out by Peter Wallace. The 32-year-old Victorian, James Maloney, a key man, of course. Even though he's missed the most tackles in the NRL this season, he's still been getting it done more often than not. And wonderful Indigenous jerseys on display already in round 10 of the NRL, including this one from the Knights, covering all the eras of Newcastle's rich Indigenous history. The jersey designed in collaboration with Ashley Gordon, Owen Craigie, Tamana Tahu and Connor Watson, each player contributing a piece of their history to local Indigenous artist Elise Randall, who incorporated the totems. And there is Tyrone Peachy and Tyrone Phillips. The two Tyrones are the two Indigenous players for the Panthers tonight, looking to put on a show here. There's the informed try scoring sensation. Over on the right edge, the last couple of weeks now, Lachlan Fitzgibbon. But it's now time for the national anthem to be performed by Alexa Elborn. Tonight we begin with the national anthem performed in our local Indigenous language, Awabakal, followed by the national anthem in English. To perform the national anthems, please welcome Alexa Elborn. Great stuff from the Panthers jersey designed by past player Glenn Lydiard. The jersey features the totem of the Wiradjuri region on the chest and the three sisters also depicted. And now the exchange of gifts between the two captains, Guerra and Wallace. No Jamie Bura tonight. He's been dropped, the co-captain. So Guerra is the outright captain tonight. Nathan Brown has made some big calls. Yeah, he hasn't been afraid uh, to make those big calls, Brenton. He's got standards that he wants his football side to play by. And as we said before, willing to make the hard calls. No Bura in the side tonight. Danny Levi back in to the Newcastle Knights lineup on the bench. And I'm really looking forward to seeing this man, Connor Watson, with his football in the hand, over 100 metres, carrying the ball last week. So dynamic. 132 metres we see there. A try assist. 25 tackles on the edge for a half. And zero missed. Uh, 
quite the player. Speedy, he certainly is. It's been tougher in this season too. Out with injury earlier on in the season. A number of halfbacks playing when he's been coming in and playing 5-8. So he's had a pretty good season. I agree with you too, Mick. He think run. When he thinks run, I think he's a better player. And there's our man too, Lachlan Fitzgibbon. Seven line breaks already this season. Seven tries in six games here at Marathon. So a wonderful effort. Looks like you've got to get him a little bit of footy. I know all the talks about Ponga. But get this guy a little bit of the footy, he can score a try. And it was known as Marathon when the other two guys to score at least uh, seven straight in seven straight games at this venue. They were Darren Albert and Adam McDougall, but now we've got uh, Fitzgibbon doing it. Really yeah. looking forward to this man, Speedy, with Revelation, the Fujian International Billy Army kick out. 80 minutes, 155 metres. He has been the real go-to man for James Maloney on their left edge. And the Knights' right edge will be asked plenty of questions here this evening. Newcastle looking for the win that would pull them alongside Penrith with a 6-4 and four record, but that's 80 minutes away. Awkward kickoff, clean bold. James Maloney, and it's picked up one-handed by Big Billy kick out for the opening hitter. Well, the kickoff's causing all kinds of dramas this year, and nearly the kickout causing a drama for Peter Wallace there. It's like he was in the enclosure at Randwick, copping a stray hoof. <laughs> Here's Fisher Harris. His work rate has been phenomenal in recent weeks. A tackling machine getting involved in the opening set offensively. Here's Peachy. And they committed to Harrow Naira, so Peachy just took the line on himself. Now Merrin. Amazing that he's playing tonight, Blocker. You were savage on him last week. Yeah, gee, I thought he had a broken arm the way that they, they had his arm in a sling, but good on him. He's out there trying. The thing that the Newcastle Knights have got to stop in this game of footy is the rampaging Penrith forwards, yardage after contact. They're better than any other side in the NRL at it. Ponga being manhandled after the safe take from the fullback. Sean Kenny Dowell in off the right wing for some early work. Slade Griffin, the dummy half, and Guerra met by Campbell Gillard. Guerra's made that move into the middle last couple of weeks. It's kick out down, I think, at the moment. Looks in all sorts of trouble. So Penrith defending with 12 right now. Every kick out. Struggling in back play. They'd like the game to stop, of course, Penrith. Now the thumbs up is being given, so he might be able to continue. They will stop play now. Well, as we mentioned, such a strike weapon for the Penrith Panthers. This was the collision. We can't see whether he got a leg caught in there, whether it was a head knock. It's hard to see from there. But as you touched on Blocker, he looked in. Well, there we go. Shoulder. The thumbs up from the trainer. Great news for Anthony Griffin's men. And no surprise, yep. the Newcastle Knights looking to try and play over that advantage line and target that middle third of the Panthers and Corey, for sure in this here. opening set. I expect right, to see a lot of outside back Great runs from the Newcastle Knights this evening. So it is the last after that stoppage. Pong are able to get the kick away. Taken on the chest by Christian Crichton. It's been a breezy afternoon here in the Hunter. And I wonder, with Megan Barnard down on the sideline, she can tell us which way it's going. Yeah, good evening, boys. Great to be here in the Hunter uh, for once again for Friday Night Footy. We had almost 23,000 fans here a week ago. Hopefully, we'll get close to that mark again tonight. Uh, if not, though, I don't blame the fans, Speedy. It's very icy, 14 degrees down here on the sideline. The scarves, the beanies, the hand warmers are all out, and it's expected to drop another couple of degrees before this game is over. Peachy back inside to Wateni Zalesniak. Now on the last. Well, they go high from Maloney's boot. Able to get it away under immense pressure. Following through was Harawira Naira, coughed up by Ponga. And it was played at it appeared. No signal of six more. Just yet now it comes. And they can start again from the 20. Home fans complaining that Ponga was taken out. Now Fisher Harris into the red zone. Well, this is the big test now for the Newcastle Knights through the middle. He's Campbell Gillard. The big boy winds up. 
World Cup winner with the Kangaroos last year. Wallace, which way will he go? He goes to Peachy. Back inside to Fisher Harris, getting plenty of it in the opening exchanges. Now Merrin wants it. Campbell Gillard there instead. Right through goes Regan Campbell Gillard. And the first points of the Knights. The Knights looked a little soft up the middle. And a nice set play with Merrin running the decoy and his fellow prop finishing it all off. Yeah, well, it all came on the back of an error from Kalen Ponga. Great contested play there from the Panthers. It was Harawira Naira, and on the back of that, the experience of Wallace testing the middle third defence of the Newcastle Knights and the inform Campbell Gillard slams the ball down. And what a start for the Panthers. Well, a repeat set is all it takes, and that's a real worry there for the Knights. We mentioned before the game that South Sydney were able to go through their middle. A simple second man play now. As Campbell Gillard went through a couple of feeble attempted leg tackles, you've got to tackle this by ball and all. If he runs over the top of you and scores, well, that's all right. But if you dive at his legs and he falls over the top of you and scores, that's not a go. Early in the, only a one repeat set, and the Penrith Panthers already through the middle have scored. They'll be pleased with that, the Panthers. They missed the start last week out in Bathurst. Gave the Cowboys all the running. But Harrow, we're an aura competed hard for that high ball forced the error and the Panthers inside 20 they are hard to stop with the likes of Wallace, Maloney and Pucci probing and asking questions Campbell Gillard he won't score too many easier than that and a straightforward conversion coming up for James Maloney kicking at 82% so far in 2018 and he does add the extras. It's 6-0 to the Panthers. Well, Sweetie, starting from behind to become a bit of a worrying trend for this Panthers side. This season, they conceded the first try in seven of nine games. They spoke about it so much this week. Anthony Griffin will be very pleased with this start. And as you saw, that's his first try of the season and first since last year's semi-finals when their season was ended by the Broncos up in Brisbane. And they love a meat pie blocky, the big boys. Oh, what? You count them. <laughs> Straight away. What about the Run designer, Mo? Blocker. Yeah, I think he should be twirling it now. After <laughs> that try, start twirling the up. That was a wicked kick. He got the torpedo spiral going, Caelan Ponger. It was a wonderful take by kick out. Here comes Phillips in off the left wing. A couple of tries for him on his Panthers debut last week. Playing in that role normally reserved for Josh Mansour. Well, almost a hospital pass from Maloney. Harold Wiranaira did well to hold on with a defender in his grill. That was Brock Lamb who came out of the line. Now Farre. Wallace scoops it up. Doesn't pick up too many metres out of dummy half. They tighten up the middle that time with Barnett. And Essie Maloney gets the kick away from just inside the 40. No problems for Ponga this time. Oh, and awkward the way that he went in on that tackle and Wallace came in as he was stumbling. The kid's okay. Brock Lamb, three games in reserve grade before working his way back in for Cogger in the halves. Almost overrunning Slade Griffin right now with his dummy half surface, but no problem for SES. Down the shorter side to Ponga. Got on the outside of his man, but Arawira Naira chopped him down in the end. Couldn't quite link up with Barnett down that side. The kick comes from Lamb. You'll see a lot of that tonight, and they allow it to bounce. Matautia had an opportunity, but they've both knocked it on there, and it's play on for the Panthers. I can never understand from the life of me. We've seen it a lot in the NRL over the last couple of weeks. Players letting big bombs bounce. You've got to attack the footy. Give the oppo opposition a, a first grab at it, which happened there, but they knocked it forward. And eventually the Panthers cleaned it up at the back. Penrith off to their best start since 2010 with their 6-3 and three record. They're off to a great start tonight. The Rabbitohs had a couple of tries on the board by this stage last week against Newcastle. 
Well, they were hoping for a better showing from the opening kickoff tonight. Haven't got it so far, Nathan Brown's men. Fisher Harris after the delayed pass from Peachy. Had the arm free as well, thought about the offload. Now Merrick. And it'd be interesting to see the way that he catches the ball tonight after that compound fracture of the right index finger last week. Required surgery in orange. Now Maloney. Incorrect play the ball by Merrick. The finger's not the problem, it's getting the boot on. <laughs> A relieving penalty here for the Newcastle Knights. The play the ball speed is evident. The Panthers generating quick play the balls. Now we know the Newcastle Knights, they can suit the most fast play the balls in the competition. It's an area they need to address because we saw in that set there, Wallace, Maloney starting to get over the advantage line and starting to ask questions of the Knights defensive line. Up the middle they go through Guerra. Playing against his Premiership teammate from 2013 at the Roosters in James Maloney. Another penalty, back to back. Piggybacking them in to the attacking area. Well, that's got, certainly going to help the Panthers just laying a little bit too long on the tackle. Look where they've got that second penalty, just over the halfway line. They've got to come up with something here, the, the Newcastle Knights. They look like they lack a little bit of confidence early in this game. I know Panthers have had a lot of the football. There's a lot of loitering out there at the moment. They've got to put something on. Penrith concede more penalties than any other team this season. And Trent Merrin's conceded back-to-back -back here. Get it to Barnett. Playing in his preferred role on the left edge. We've seen him as the lock so often, but he loves being out there. Playing outside Kalen Ponga right now. They go that way. Ponga. Cut-out pass. Spiralled out to Kenny Seo. He does well to hold on. He butchered a try last week in a major turning point against the Bunnies, did Kenny. Now Lamb, and not quite in sync with his teammates there. He had three options and couldn't link with any of them. Slow play the ball for Griffin. Now Connor Watson stepped around, kick out. Good coverage back inside from Wallace. Now on the last, Lamb oh. kicks. He was hooked as he got rid of it by Campbell Gillard. They're blowing up about that. There's no whistle so far. They've cleared it. It'll be a seven tackle set. He yeah, didn't no. miss him, did he? No, at think, all. I don't think it was high. He's got that tendency too to come out of the line, hasn't he, Campbell Gillard? To put pressure on. Just put him on notice. I'm going to be around all Arvo. Welcome back to first grade, Brock Lamb. He felt that one, Mick. That was a good whack by the opening try scorer tonight, Campbell Gillard, who's fired up. Wallace asking for a penalty, had a good case too, it appeared. Now Campbell Gillard met solidly. Josh King in the headband tonight, his first appearance of the season. Featured in the last 12 games of 2017, did King. Harawira and Ira off a flat pass from Peachy. No way through the roster. Maloney, little bobble, gets it to kick out. Taking on Connor Watson, trying to push the miracle pass. They've puffed it up, but they're all offside, the right side of the Knights' defence. Geez, they're dangerous, aren't they, the Panthers? The kick out hasn't been the same since he got knocked a little bit earlier. Tried to flick the ball out the back. Close support needing there for the Panthers, but it's looking ominous at the moment, isn't it? They're looking very slow off the line. Quick play the balls from the Panthers. I wouldn't be surprised they keep the pressure on here. Yeah, we've seen quite a bit of this. And there's that fast play the ball again. And Maloney straight over the advantage line, trying to find his man, kick out. Drew a penalty. And really evident with the way the Panthers are moving the football. They're attacking the Knights' edges. Kick out. Setting them up. They've got a long line to the right now. Wallace goes to Merrick. They wrap it up. They know he's got the potential to offload and get some second phase footy going. They get him on his back. Good effort in the wrestle there from Newcastle. Now runner. Scored on four. Now Peachy, direct start, and the opposition defence. 
Not a lot happening on this set. They come to the last for Maloney. Looking for the upright. Just missed it. Little knock on and tidied up on in goal, by anyway. Lamb in the end at the expense of another repeat set. Yeah, beautiful kick there. James Maloney managing this momentum. You're right, Brendan. It was a, an average set. Wallace got out of acting half. Nothing really doing. Then they found kick out flat-footed. But Maloney sensing they're starting to build. They're gaining position. A repeat set of six. And this is a big, big set for the Newcastle Knights. They need to hold on. Well, they showed their intent, haven't they? The Panthers, that was a kickable goal. Keep the pressure on. They've had plenty of football early in this game. Stay behind. And they're too far off a try here. Not a great connection from Lamb. Merrin winding up to bring it back. Take your pick. Campbell Gillard was on the other side then. <laughs> Merrin ran for 211 metres in the last clash with Newcastle. Midway through last season. There's the second phase provided by Campbell Gillard. Fisher Harris off the back of it all. King giving him a real working over. He's lost that strapping around the head, wasn't suiting it. Lovely flat ball for Maloney. Campbell Gillard hunting out on the left edge this time. They're queuing up now, the Panthers. Billy kick out. Well done, Matauti. here. Read it well defensively. Stopped the bigger man. King just lying in the rock, and that leaves the referee with only one option. And play five penalty hurts. Nathan Brown will be absolutely livid with young King there. Offside player, Peter. And at the moment, the Panthers looking to find Brock Lamb and then come back with big kick out attacking this right hand edge of the Newcastle Knights. But it's held, it's holding up, it's holding up at the moment. Possession up over 70% for Penrith. That normally leads to just more than six points blocker. Well, they've got to turn it into points too. I suppose the problem for Penrith, they like to be a bit further out attacking. They've been right 10 metres out. Let's see what they can come up with here. Great, Great hands. pick up, Farah off his boot laces after the Poor pass from Watani Zalesnia. Now Maloney. Fisher Harris again. Took three to stop him. Wallace. They got to his arms as he tried to get the pass away. All the way out to Watani Zalesnia, who loves playing in the fullback role. Able to get it away to Campbell Gillard. Still going. They don't allow him to stretch out that time and slam it down. Peachy off the right boot in Indigenous round. Tyrone Peachy celebrates with the meat pie. The boy from Wellington in New South Wales makes it 10-0 to the Panthers. And how fitting Indigenous round, one of my favourites, Tyrone Peachy. Great instincts comes bang off the right foot. Charges through the centre of the Newcastle Knights defence. Comes out the other side. What a player. He comes up with the second try of the night for the Penrith Panthers. Ten points to nil. Well, you know what he's got, Nick? He's got wonderful awareness. He saw them come off their line and turn out. As soon as they turned out, Pucci come off his right foot and was strong enough to get over that close to the line. Great awareness there from Pucci. They had to score so much football from the Panthers. They showed good patience. A couple of bad passes there. They picked them off their toes. And eventually, Pucci gets a second try. Loves playing the Knights as well. That's five in five against them. And it's looking pretty ominous right now. And the crowd's flat. They want to see more from their team right now, but they haven't had the pill. They certainly haven't. 74% of possession at the moment. It's been a weight of possession with the Panthers. And Maloney and Wallace and now Tyrone Pucci just dictating terms. He, he just reminds me of the kid that would have been on his push bike turning up at local grounds. Didn't matter if they were three, four years older than him. He would have loved it. He just he just is such a natural footballer with brilliant instincts, Tyrone Pucci. The other thing too, they've completed eight from nine. So it's not only the percentage that they've got of the ball, they've completed well too, the Panthers. And his halves partner converts 12-0 to the visitors and don't forget their game two in our double header tonight 
the Bulldogs against Parramatta from ANZ Stadium two great rivals four and V Moses M by V Gutherson a mouth-watering encounter coming up one of those teams will get a much needed victory They could do with Mitchell Pearce oh, out there, but he's out for a long stint due to injury, of course. Uh, yet another halves combination for the Knights. It's the third different halves partner in four games for Connor Watson. Well, there's nothing you can do about it for a young fella like that. You've just got to dig in. He's done pretty well, I reckon. If he thinks run, he's a better player. That's what he's thinking as well heading into tonight. He knows that Brock Lamb is going to be the controlling half with the kicking game. It's up to Connor Watson and Ponga to roam, but they need the ball to do that, of course. They've got to defend right now as Merrin pokes his head out the other side. Overrunning there, Peachy. That's a bonus for Newcastle. They'll start from the 40 here with the scrum feet. Yep, starting to get a little expansive. They feel like they're really starting to cause the Knights' defensive line headaches. And Pucci, he overran that too excited. And the forward pass. And the Knights now invited into the Panthers' half for the first time in quite some time. Lock him in for me, where they need to build some pressure. Right, guys, they need to, the likes of Tonga, Lamb and Watson really need to step up. A couple of repeat sets. Try and even out that possession. Take some gas. Take some petrol out of this Panthers defensive line. Wonderful place to start this set for the Knights. And they get a penalty as well. You can edge towards that red zone right now. Well, they've been gifted field position, haven't they? Onside, Brock. After a forward pass and now a penalty on the back of it. Ponga will take the kick for touch. Doesn't go for that much distance. And we called that game last week against the Cowboys, Block, and you'd expect Penrith's defence to be targeted on, on this side. Yeah, their left side. It was ordinary last week. It didn't take Morgan and First and Long to sum that up. They scored about three tries down that edge. So it'll be interesting to see where the Newcastle Knights go. Now, well, Ponga is waiting out on this side, and so is Fitzgibbon, their strike player. Now Ponga is drifting over to the left. He might get it here. He does. Off the back of Lamb, and they're through. Barnett. Miracle offload. They'll score here, the Knights. Wonderful try. And it's another Indigenous star, Connor Watson, with Newcastle's first try of the night. The ball handling and passing was superb. Well, the home fans won't like this. We're going to the bunker. Try. But while you're sitting at home, watch this piece of play from Mitchell Barnett. Kalen Ponga, as he does so well, sums up the situation beautifully. Gets to Harawira and Ira out the back, draws See, it's a defensive Pucci. decision by the Pan Penrith Panthers. There's no obstruction at this stage. And with players all over him, an incredible pass and the support from Watson just as good. And Connor Watson grounds the ball. We have a decision. Gee, and the that, Knights are on the board. Gee, that's a great hit back there from the Newcastle Knights. Kalen Ponga, watch the way he holds the ball up. He gets Peachy interested. And then the short pass on the outside there to Barnett. But hovering around, it's a try. Hovering around, a good support player. And very quick, Connor Watson. A little bit stronger. He's only a little fella. A little bit stronger than people think. Barges his way over. It was brilliant recognition. Kalen Ponga, as you touched on, Brenton, swung to that left-hand side of the field. And a beautiful slide of hand to Barnett. And then the support. That, that's his greatest strength, Connor Watson, his running game. You've touched on a blocker. But his support game, too, with his speed, is exceptional. And the Knights are back in it. And the Panthers' concerning signs in terms of... The first time the Knights have really had any possession on their try line, they've come up with a four-pointer. Connor Watson playing with his totem on that Indigenous jersey. A proud Indigenous man, and his dad has helped paint his boots Gee, for the occasion wheels. as well. They're good wheels, aren't they? <laughs> How do you get a pair of them? <laughs> Looking spectacular. I think they're up for grabs as well. You can bid for them online, I yeah, believe. Yes, I don't like them that much. <laughs> there they are. Wow. 
They do a great job. The clubs, the NRL, in supporting this Indigenous round. The players uh, right behind it. As you mentioned, Connor Watson getting involved. And there we have it. 12 career tries. His third for the season. He debuted against Penrith back in round seven of 2016. Another oh, former no, rooster. And he said it was up to he and Ponga to roam around and make things happen, and they did on that play. How yeah, good is Caelan Ponga? He, he, he's just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So you can't teach what he just did. That just comes natural. It he's comes easy to him, Ponga. Yeah, it, it comes it. easy. He said it comes to him from his touch footy background. Newcastle sports stores, I reckon. Make sure you got them on the right. Back to front. <laughs> they all overran. The tackle. Round lamp in the opening stage. Attack at the moment. So far. Tweet and the right over the top of Phillips. Fronted by a good chase in the. Everything he touches, even. And in off that wing. So used to seeing him in a. Goes Marin, good meters up. Andy Dowell in off the wing. Not a great. because he was under pressure. Try and step his way through. Cherry thought he had it. Uh, holding that pass up. Phillips. First instinct, Tyrone Phillips. And they up quickly. Dummy half, and they get a penalty. Conceding so many. Seen and Newcastle's to the worst in the comp for concede. They certainly are, and with this, do not want them to get behind the equation in the opening ten. To Connor, you can feel the momentum. Fires at the Watson. Wrong on the first tackle. Able to hold on. Not as many hit ups from. It's a little flick out the. Through the, the wrong way for the Knights. Replace Campbell Gillard. Who else? The contest does Campbell Gillard. Surely poised to become a blue for the first time. Spinning away was Watson as Farrow came out of the line quickly. Too quickly. Easy. No, no, 10 metre penalty. 10 he meter. was looking for another. Farrow <laughs> absolutely levelled Marshall King. A number of weeks ago, and had Connor Watson right in his sights. Well, I'll tell you what, they can't afford to keep giving Newcastle Knights the opportunity with the football. Any side in the NRL will make you pay. They've got some dangerous players, and they're getting really slow in the middle now. The Panthers, three penalties in a row to the Knights. Essie, Essie, down low was Harawira Naira putting his body on the line. Now Lamb throwing the big dummy. 
almost open up for him. They had a big line to the right. They're still there waiting for it. Ponga, desperate to get his hands on it again, moves it on quickly to Fitzgibbon. They were ready and waiting for the right edge runner. Matauti is still saying they've got the numbers out this side, but Griffin goes the other. Helped on to Ponga. He's popping up everywhere right now. And almost slipped his way through. They had to scramble. Did the Penny Panthers. Now Griffin. Not enough weight on that kick. It's hanging around, though. It should be another set. Maybe no. They say it was knocked on by the Knights, and it's Penrith ball. If you're going to kick the ball away, you've got to make sure that it, it, that it lands in the in-goal area that time. Griffin comes out from dummy half on a sideways travel, kicks the football sideways. Penrith get it back. It was only the fourth tackle. Anthony Griffin's just gone to the bench for the first time, boys. Trent Marinoff, big James Tamo on. Here he is, right on cue. And against his former club last week. He's been terrific, Speedy, since being moved back to the bench. I think he's found his best form. I think it took him a little while to settle in, especially in 2017 at the Panthers. But since going back to the bench, he's been averaging well over 100 metres. We see Campbell Gillard again, ripping and tearing through the middle. His opening shift looks like going past the half hour mark. Here's Tamo. He had eight tackle busts last time he took on the Knights. On the last, Maloney with plenty of time to get an effective kick away that time. Kenny Dow camped underneath it. Driven back into his 20 by kick out after Maloney was dispatched the other way. Seeing changes for both teams right now. Merrin and SES have both come off. Gee, that was an effort for Merrin. 99 metres with nine runs. Incredible. He's a great stint blocker. I'm glad you mentioned it. He was superb. Just days after surgery on that finger. Well, that's right. I mean, he, he's had limited preparation. As we see an error now from Safidi. And all of a sudden, the Panthers up towards the 30 metre line. They go quickly out to Peachy. Farah. Four tries in his past five games against Newcastle, but he hasn't scored in a long, long time, Dean Farah. Last try came against the Knights in round four of last season. Might go his way again. Peachy ignores the right side that time, just floats one. To Tamo, a nothing play from Penrith. Now Maloney trying to sort things out. Gets it in his hands. Fisher Harris flicks one out the back. Martini Zalesniak around the Ross dog, but he didn't get past Mitch Barnett. So they're all over the shop right now on this set. Penrith. Settler comes from far right. Now Wallace with the kick. It's a handy one in behind. He nearly got there. Instead, it's a seven tackle set. Coming up. Well, he rolled the dice there. Wallace recognised that Kalen Ponga was in the line on the other side of the field. There you see Ponga in the back play, unable to get to it. Just too much weight on the kick, and now the Knights with a great opportunity. Seven tackles. Matout here. Gee, the idea is right with a trick shot there when you're especially depending on Maloney to do the bulk of the kicking there. A little grubber kick in behind by Wallace. Just a little bit too much on it, but the idea was right. Came up with his first career double in his 239th NRL game last week, Peter Wallace. So in try scoring form, he really fancied it. Now Griffin comes back to Hyington. The veteran just held on. It was an awkward fall for him. Could easily have come out of his grasp like Saifidi. Lost it a moment ago, straight through Maloney goes Fitzgibbon. What a run! Pops it up to the voice of Watson, who couldn't keep it moving, but Rockman Fitzgibbon v Maloney, not a fair fight right now. Saifidi spinning his way over. They're going to level things up here in the Knights. A moment ago, he made a shocking error, Daniel Saifidi, but now he's a try scorer. Right. Before that, what have you got? The offside. Five decision. Right Time off. Okay. Nick, Nick, Nick. Do you have offside before that? Thank you. 
Time off video review. No try. Just. He must have brushed yep. his microphone at the key moment there, but yep. it's no try right now. They're saying offside. The touch judges called them offside. No. Oh. There's there going go. to be some trouble there with the play the ball. I think it's Connor Watson pulls the marker down. And the Knights are going to miss an opportunity here. It's Tyrone Phillips at marker. Connor Watson makes contact oh, no. with Tyrone Phillips and denies him a chance to make the tackle. We have a decision. No. Well, that's what opened up that big space, which Absolutely. they did explore. But it should be Newcastle ball, though, shouldn't it? If they're saying offside before that or not? You do it, punk. That's what the referee will now decide whose He's ball it is. I think it'll be Newcastle's. So even though they don't come up with six points there, they should get another shot at it, or do they? No. Penalty goes the other way. It certainly seen that way with the information here, we received beforehand from the touch judge. But, oh, Connor Watson, that's a huge blow. All the momentum with the Knights. And Daniel Sight, Foody. Why, why would you do it? It's a rush of blood. Why would you do it? They, they, uh, they made the big break. Maloney missed the tackle. Fitzgibbon went straight through him. They go straight to the post. They score back on the inside. Why would you muck around at the play the ball and grab some? Well, he's a winger. No, no disrespect, but he's a winger. So the chance of Saifudi going one-on-one -on -one with Tyrone Phillips anyway, he would have been a chance. So there was no need to obstruct him. Oh, Peachy nearly. Through and out the other side. Katoa's come on to give Peter Wallace a little chop out. And here he goes out of dummy half with 15 metres. A very handy little player is Sione Katoa. Absolute star in reserve grade last year. Getting his opportunity in the top grade. Oh, Matauts here. Matani Zelezniak didn't even feel it. Spun his way across field. He was trying to go all far away on us. Matauts here nearly nailed it. <laughs> Well, I reckon the Panthers are going to get back to going through the middle. They've got away from that. They're trying to go side to side now. A little bit too tricky. Absolutely, block up. I mean, the, the tries for the Panthers have come through that centre third. And obviously, Campbell Gillard and Pucci when he came off his right foot. But they are every chance they get any momentum, they're looking to move the football instead of staying there with the momentum through that middle third of the field. And now the Knights through Suyo up to the 20 metre line. Yeah, they need their outside backs right now. They've done a stack of tackling in this first half. The Knights have had the least run metres per game in 2018, and they concede the most. Here goes Fitzgibbon, though. A real handful again to the voice of Watson. He's got support on the inside. It's a shocking pass. Brock Lamb would have been away. Instead, Peachy goes the other way. Oh. What action we are seeing. Tyrone Peachy eyeing off a double. Oh. Hyington got there in cover. But try. Tenny Zalesniak will finish it all off. Both teams could have scored on that play. Oh, it's Penrith in. who pouts. Unbelievable. Quite incredible. Connor Watson on the back of a terrific run from Fitzgibbon again. Levi was out of acting half. He found Fitzgibbon, who got a brilliant ball to Watson, who went through. Lamb was looming on the inside. And a horrible pass. An absolute horrible pass on the inside. Well, no, Mick, you've got to practice these sort of things. Once you get into open field, you've got to, you've got to land that pass back on the inside. Peachy scoops it up and goes downfield again. And from one Indigenous player, Connor Watson, to another. And we spoke about the instincts of Peachy. And he broke through numerous tackles. And Zelezniak brings the football around. Plants it down. Panthers 16-6 kick the cup. Zelezniak has been really hot today, hasn't he? When he gets the football, he's got wonderful speed. They've tried to put a couple of shots on him. Peachy makes the break, puts it back inside. But Connor Watson, good player, great player around the middle of the rough. But you've got to learn to pass. You've got to nail that. That's got to be a try to Newcastle. We've just seen a 12-point yep. swing Absolutely. in the space of 15 seconds. Martini Zalesniak has got his best strike rate against any opponent against Newcastle. That's five in his last four games against them. He loves playing the Knights, and he loves playing with that number one on his back. Dylan Edwards ruled out for the season, of course. He's going to be there 
Well, you know what? I'll be getting Lock and Fitzgibbon a little bit more football. Yeah. I'll be working to the middle and working to his side down this right side. And Maloney he hopes he doesn't come that way. He's Tom off. had his hands full. Twelve point gap opened up, Megan Barner. Yeah, it's pretty quiet down now here, uh, down here on the sidelines. Speedy Knights fans, I think, left a bit stunned after that mistake a few moments ago. And as you mentioned, Dallin Wateni Zelezniak, uh, he's got his best strike rate against the Knights, so no surprise to see him get on the score sheet tonight. Well, that's two tries now. The one to Safidi, and then the chance that went begging for Brock Lamb that the Knights have missed in this opening half. The scoreboard could look quite different. But the Panthers, they just strike at every opportunity. Turning the shoulder and bringing it back is Kate Ellis. Out there now in the number 15 jumper for his second game in the NRL. Taboo back in round six, back in because Hetherington picked up a suspension during the week for a crush a tackle last week in Bathurst. Here's a penalty, they'll march up the field again. It's a shame young Hetherington, he's a good young player. A really good couple of weeks, plenty of intent and aggression in his game. I, I like him, they just continue to produce. And now young Luai tonight, he'll get his opportunity as well for the Panthers. He doesn't have a great disciplinary record though, Hetherington, and that cost him. With that crusher last week, Blocker, any advice for him? To... <laughs> I'm mental as anything, I've got no advice for anyone. I don't think he'd be asking me, put it that way. Inside the final five in this first half. Scoreline could have been anything, really. Hey, Dallas, a solid little nuggety figure, isn't he? Committing his body to the line. Peachy to Maloney. Kick out, running a little angle. And down low, there's Barnett again with the textbook tackle. Peachy, Maloney, the halves combining more often than not right now. Farley around the outside, but they scrambled in cover. Forced him back infield. Katoa says, where to next? He goes to Ellis. On to Tama. Running at Guerra. Who had support from Saifidi. The man mountains, kept his feet. Quick play of the ball, not a great pass from Maloney, but Wateni Zelezniak controlled it. He's got to get a kick away. There weren't too many behind him, but this man was Crichton. Well done by Lamb to get around him. And just into the field of play. Nearly a shepherd from Nathan Ross, but he made himself as scarce as he could in that situation. Three tackles now, and they're not out of the team. Penrith really muscling up here, sensing another opportunity before the break, perhaps. They need a big kick at the end of this set, or a penalty late in the count. And they're not going to get the penalty, it appears. So Ponga says, where to for the kick? Lamb shanks it. And Phillips gets there on the four. That's not a knock-on. If Fonsarko's wasn't last week, that's definitely not a knock-on. And Phillips almost through. He's a handful, tripped up in the end. Allowed to go and nearly the one-on-one -on -one strip. They were looking for it. Weren't too far away from pulling it off either, Chris Hyington. Yeah, certainly went back. Just saw in the replay box there from Tyrone Phillips. And now the Panthers on the attack through Pucci. Ran into the shoulder of Hyington. Danny Levi out there as well after his recall to first grade. Giving Griffin a little chop out in the dummy half roll. All right, almost running out of real estate. Maloney. They've had so many opportunities in the red zone tonight. They've looked more dangerous from longer range. Katoa. Looking for one more repeat set, and he'll get it. Don't you love the way they kick it off the side of their boot, and the ball bounces and goes on right angles. Katoa, a good little kick right, that Chris. time. They're under the pump, aren't they? They are relentless, this Penrith side. And you mentioned Tamo before. Imagine 
you've worn out, you're worn out for the first 20, and then that big unit comes on at you again. Beautiful kick from Katoa. You touched on it, Spooty. He is a live wire out of dummy half. He's been exceptional in the lower grades. What about this guy? He's made 30 tackles already tonight. His career high is 46. He's well on the way. Yeah, he's got an outstanding work rate. He was a feature for the Sydney Roosters through a very successful period in the Queensland Origin team as well. Nathan Brown's moved him into the lock position to really stiffen up their middle third defence. Sitting in the log jam in 10th position, uh, in, on 10 competition points, I beg your pardon, this next minute and a half is vital. They can't go in trailing any more than 12 points here, the Newcastle Knights. They've missed some opportunities, but their goal line defence now is absolutely critical. I'm a little bit worried about the second half of the Newcastle Knights. They've been pummeled in the middle here. Had to make a lot, a lot of tackles. Are you worried about Hyington's finger? Ah, uh, no, not after last week. I'm not worried about anyone's Malmeninga. <laughs> <laughs> now, after that extra delay for Hyington's finger to get sorted out, Brock Lamb can restart things, and there's one more set, a full set here for the Panthers. What can they do with it? See the breeze on that ball again as we saw. Great shot there from that man Guerra over the top. 31 tackles now for Guerra. Yeah, that has to be in the back of the minds of the Knights players. They'll have the breeze at their backs in the second half. Need to hold on here to keep it tight. Little slip from the Knights defenders there. Katoa. Maloney gets into dummy half. Peachy. So elusive tonight. Passes it really low to Yo. Good tackle. Your man again, Graston. They yeah. had a mistake. They needed that tonight. And they can just let the clock peter out if they so choose. And cop a 12-point deficit heading into half time. I think on the back of that amount of position, it got over 70% at one stage in the opening 15 minutes of this game. And the Panthers leading 12-0. I think Nathan Brown will be reasonably happy at half time. They've had to make 188 tackles here at Newcastle. 117 from the Panthers. So they will be full of energy in the second half. But the Knights will have the breeze at their backs. So the game still in the balance, but Penrith right where they want to be. Their second halves have been outstanding, and they lead this one 18-6. So the second halves. Penrith concede the least points in the second 40, score the second most, while the Knights, they allow the most points and score just 7.6 points on average in second halves. They let it, need a lot more than that tonight, but they do have the breeze at their backs. You mentioned Tyrone Peachy being in origin calculations. He thinks he's uh, a good mate of Brad Fittler's as well, so he's got him on speed dial if required. See whether he can be a factor come origin time. Levi asking for a penalty, nothing doing. Barnett. Backing his way into Ellis and company. Now up the middle, Hyington with a support runner. Helped it on to Saifidi. Back to Lamb for the kick. Again, Katoa got there to put some pressure on. Off the hands nearly of Crichton. Good juggling act from the winger and nearly got over him. And then he nearly opened them up. He slipped through Levi's tackle. Well, that's a bad sign for the Newcastle Knights after a poor kick to end that set. Crichton nearly goes straight through. First tackle that they had to make in the second half, Newcastle. Martini well, Zelezniak looked hard to handle as well. And then there's an easy 12 metres for Dean Fare out of dummy half. And they are rolling on their first set. Peachy helping it on to Isaiah Yo. He's a good player, Isaiah. Look at this. Thinking about an offload as well, but told not to push the pass. He picked up about 15 metres after contact there. Oh. Now back on the inside, Tamo. They're just hanging on here, Newcastle. Katoa to Maloney. Kick back inside. No one really hunting it up, so Ponga able to take it under. No pressure. Away he goes. What about the move he put on Maloney? And that could easily have been a penalty. They run out of dummy half, and now the home fans getting involved. 
Baying for a penalty. And what about the pace of Ponga at the back? We know what a skillful player he is. Maloney puts the grubber kick through. He's there on one bounce. Read it beautifully. And showcase the footwork. To breeze past Maloney. Now, helped on by Lamb. Able to get in sync with Guerra. That's on. Down the short side. Connor Watson and the Knights playing catch up. Lamb. Fisher Harris got there to tackle him as he got the kick away. Right. Almost ran into a really solid shoulder there from Cy Thede. Yeah, you touched on the kicking game in that opening set blocker. It's been poor tonight from Brock Lamb. He's been under all sorts of pressure. They've done a real job in that area. Needs to improve in this second half. Especially with the wind behind them. They need to start winning field position. Into enemy territory once more are uh, the Panthers. Peachy looking to put some footwork on again. Katoa. Maloney holding it up for Harawira Naira trying to cut back inside. That's a great tackle made by Lamb and now coughed up by Katoa. Well, it should be a penalty because Brock Lamb was caught in the play the ball. As the ball was, as he was getting up and playing the football, look at that. Oh, I think he just lost concentration there. Block took his eyes off the ball. He tried to, he's got a habit, and he's very skillful at scooping up the ball one-handed. And he got a rush of blood there. He was thinking about what he wanted to do before he picked up the ball. And now the Knights through Ponga. Does everything, this kid. One off the ruck, dummy half running, <laughs> cleaning up at the back, giving the goal kicks. There's another talented youngster who's not out there tonight, but he is with Megan Barnard. Yes, but you've got Nathan Cleary freezing down here alongside me. Uh, Nate, the boys are looking pretty dangerous out there. Yeah, they're going pretty well. Uh, it's definitely cold, but um, it's it's good watching from the sidelines, doing, watching them go so well. So, um, yeah, hopefully I can bring it home in the end. How's that knee going? We saw you running around there, running around out there in the warm-up. Yeah, it's coming along pretty well. Uh, pretty much ticked all the boxes now, so hopefully we're ready to go next week. Yeah, can you give us a definitive answer? Will you be back next week? At this stage, yes. That is fantastic. And uh, in terms of origin, good to get back out there and uh, push your case. Uh, yeah, it is. You know, I'm, I'm just kind of focused on getting this first game out of the way back to playing for Penrith and uh, hopefully keeping the good form going. And then if I have to play origin, that'd be a great honour. But uh, yeah, not thinking about it too much at the moment. Go inside, get warm, and uh, we look forward to seeing you out here next week. Cheers. Thanks, Megan. Appreciate it. And guess who that's against? The West Dad. Tigers. <laughs> and Dad. <laughs> Up there too at home, isn't it? In Penrith, yeah. Here go Newcastle through Barnett. Had the arm free briefly with Watson looming. Levi, select pass for Saifidi. One more tackle up their sleeve. Where do they go on the last? Lamb right behind Levi. Little kick in behind, bending away towards Phillips. The chase is good initially. Phillips trying to get out of there and they scrambled to pin him in the end goal and get that repeat set. Yeah, they should have gone out the back the play before. They had uh, James Maloney posted with ample space around him. They were trying to isolate him. Levi played short, but Brock Lamb, beautifully shaped kick there. Ponga chase. Phillips turned him inside out. But the Knights forced a goal line dropout. And he's a lot better too when the pressure's not put on him, Brock Lamb. A perfectly positioned kick. Newcastle, can they flum a try and make a game of this one? Ross into dummy half. Takes them on himself, does the roster. Looking to really get into this game. Here's the left centre. His dad actually made his debut in first grade as a Panther. Way back in 1980. Only got one win in Penrith Colours. Slotted the winning field goal 38 years ago this month. But his dad, Mark Ross. Now, to the right-hand side they go. Lamb holds on. He just can't find any sink with Guerra outside him there. Levi comes the other way. There's only Barnett to hit. Not thinking pass until now to Ross. And he coughs it up. Crichton in off a wing to force the error. And now Wateni Zalesniak. The counter-attack from Penrith has been brilliant tonight. But he coughs it up. Great and hit they by say, Ponga. Yep. 
He's the man that hit him over the top. Put his body on the line after a long-range break here from the Panthers. Great tackle from Ponga. Well, they got it horribly wrong down their left-hand side, the Knights. They turned the football over, and again, Zelezniak sliced them straight open. Now, we all talk about the sidestep of this kid and the brilliant things he does with the ball, but his defence has been a real highlight in 2018 and a great shot there one-on-one -on, -one on the bigger man, Zelezniak. And the Knights with another opportunity now. Deliberately going in under the ball almost to try and pop it out, and he got his result. It's just brilliant awareness in everything that he does on the field. How good's he going to be? He's 20, isn't he? Yeah, he's only just gone 20. It's embarrassing how good he is. <laughs> He'll be part of the Queensland setup at some stage during Origin. Maybe only as an 18th man, but gee, where's his form? The Dally M points leader, if you don't mind, suggests he should be starting maybe or somewhere in that 17 for Queensland. Now Saifini. They've had a bit more ball. They've been starting to square up that possession stat. Newcastle, Highington to Ponga. Billy Kickow lined him up. Took him a little high as well, but that's because Ponga was ducking. Maloney held on There's far too long. He gave away more penalties than anyone else last year. Jimmy Maloney. This year it's Peter Wallace giving away the most, but that time it's against the halfback. Well, I know they need points, and they need points, so they need to capitalise on this possession, but in somewhat flip side, they need to be able to be patient as well. They don't want to give away, they want to stay here. They want to sap the possession away from the Panthers as Heinings are now inside the 20 metre attacking zone. Lamb, a bit more room to move this time. Turn Saifidi back inside. Lamb, we're a running an angle. Campbell Gillard there to greet him. Levi comes back to the open side. Ponga, early ball for the roster. One on one, Tyrone Pucci, I think it is, yes. Another penalty, though. Now, yeah, racking up. Well, how long are they going to put up with this? He'll call the captain out for That's sure. Three. Yeah. No worries, Let's clean it up in the area. Well, it's like three up to get the ball to Ponga, isn't it? Who looks the man most likely? I'd like to see Levi. He's quite crafty and creative block up out of acting half. So to slow things down, have a look at his options. Might come from a Barnett offload. Ponga oh, wanted it there, but Barnett said, I'll have that. And a pretty flat here. That's another penalty. They just got a warning to tidy things up. Here comes the official one. Who's your captain, Regan? See, I'll blow up about this. It's not an advantage to the attacking team. Well, no one wants to own up to be captain right now because Peter Wallace isn't out there. Maloney said, I don't know. Come and talk to me. Succession. Three in the ruck. We need to clean that up, otherwise you'll be playing short. There, there, that's not we need to right. respond to the ruck, to the cause in the ruck. Penalty count 9-4 right now. They need to be careful here, the Panthers. We've seen a real trend in 2018. Referee's not afraid to use the sin bin for infringements inside the 20 as the Knights go on the attack. They're up early here. Back inside to Hyington. Nowhere to go. They're testing the referee. Again, they're up early. Harawira and Ira. Keeps on leaving the line far too early. We've got a man down too, the Panthers. That's why Tenny Zelezniak. They've got to hold on to the footy. They nearly coughed it up through Fitzgibbon. Now they've got a long line for a set play here in Newcastle. They're up early again. Lamb kicking in behind to the space. Here come the chasers. And it's last touch off oh, Wartenny Zelezniak for the dropout. Brock Lamb, he recognised that the right edge of the Panthers had gotten off their line hard. There was space in behind. This was, oh, 
Mornington. Is that a punch? <laughs> More a club. <laughs> now, Street Fighters used to club you so you didn't break your knuckles, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> and Watteni Zalesniak is saying, I've got a bruised forehead here, and that's because I got clubbed. And why is that not tending the bin? Because it was in a, by a tackled player. On to Watteni Zalesniak. We've just seen that on the big screen. Does the bunker tip anyone off there, or because it happened so long ago, they can't sanction it? Yeah, it's, well, he certainly got him, that's for sure. Whether it's deliberate or not, it's hard to tell him in amongst the context of the tackle. Yeah, he's, he's definitely lashing out, but I don't know if there's intent to punch him, Chris Hornington. He no, he's trying to he's get him off. sort of person. He's gotten away with it. That's half the battle, Speedy. <laughs> <laughs> Now, can they get some payoff with points after all this pressure and all the penalties that Penrith have been conceding? I just wonder if they don't score, how much this is taken out of them. Absolutely. They could get a real adrenaline rush if they can find a try. It's going to get Ponga with his hands on it here. They go for Saifidi for a settler right up the middle. Ponga wants it to the left. With Barnett outside him, Levi goes the other way to land. Where are running an angle? Surely they come to Ponga now. Levi looks over his left shoulder, fires it to Ponga. Little kick in behind. How's the bounce? Great chase by Barnett, able to make the tackle and force another repeat set. Well, they're lucky. Nathan Ross, on first glance, was cleaned up and looked certain for all money to be the first player to the ball. He was run off the football. We'll see it here. Ponga off the left foot. And there's Ross in the background of the... Oh, we're underway. Maloney's gone the, the quick kick off. And nearly. Well, the bounce took a Newcastle bounce. Otherwise, you'd fancy that was going to find touch with a better bounce for Penrith. It was great awareness by Jimmy Maloney. He nearly got a scrum feet 45 metres out from their line, which they attacked. Meters in the breeze. Yeah. Incredible. Well, it is a little bit fluky. Maybe it's at their backs right now. Very blustery evening in the Hunter. I just hope Connor Watson hasn't gone into his shell. Lamb has it. He's opened them up. Here's Ponga. Whoa. He's going to score. The kid. Kalen has them flailing again. And the Knights are back in this one. Big time. Well, this is beautiful play from Brock Lamb, and this is what Nathan Brown has brought him into the side for. Not only his kicking game, but when he runs the football, he can prove a threat. Comes off his left foot. It's a beautiful fend on the inside. Gets into the backfield. We'll see here. This was Caleb Ponga. He got the repeat set. Barnett came up with the tackle and forced the dropout. And then nothing doing here. Lamb gets the football, and bang, off the left foot beats Tamo. Fens Fisher-Harris, and who else? But Caleb Ponga looming on his outside. And all of a sudden, with the possession, Caelan Ponga gets the Knights back in the contest. You're right, Mick. The footwork there from Brock Lamb on the much bigger Panther forwards. We've been under the pump, too. They've had a lot of possession. But what about the awareness and game awareness to be in the right spot at the right time? The break's made. Who do you reckon's there straight on the outside straight away? Caelan Ponga has been all over the place. Both sides of the field, the get break's get made, get he's get right there on the spot, and the Newcastle Knights are back in it. He's got nine, nine try assists himself this year. That's just his second four-pointer, and he saw him point immediately to Brock Lamb, saying, thank you very much for putting me over untouched. He handed up the goal-kicking responsibilities to Kenny Seo as well a few weeks back, and it's important that the Knights keep adding the extras here and make it a, a one-score game, if you like. You see him gargling that liquid there. Often the players these days have stuff called pickle juice, <laughs> and it actually stops cramping for the people at home that are wondering. So, as you touched on Blocker, the amount of involvements that he has, he's putting his body uh, through treacherous states. How come he spat it out? Well, that's all you've got to do, apparently. I drink yeah. it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you would. 
Mental as anything, didn't you say? <laughs> <laughs> so CO lining it up, does add the extras, and it's a six-point ball game all of a sudden. Yeah, they're back in at the night, Speedy. Just another piece of brilliance uh, to add to the highlight reel for Kalen Ponga. Boy, he's been getting wrapped from all corners of uh, rugby league of late, and rightly so. This week, his former teammate Michael Morgan weighed in. He said the 20-year-old would look out of place if he wasn't in a Maroons jersey come origin time. It is very hard to disagree with that. There's some concern for Brock Lamb. He's had the trainers with him. Look to be some sort of ankle, but that'll do his confidence the well for good. Coming into the backfield off his left foot, Fend. Hopefully he grows and grows and flourishes now with some confidence, young Brock Lamb. And Nathan Ross was reflecting on last year for Brock Lamb when he got dropped to reserve grade and came back and had a sensational game. He's hoping that would happen tonight. And maybe that's the spark that Lamb was looking for. I think that kickoff was awkward for Sio. He did well to hold on, didn't he? Look at all that possession in the second half. 80% of it for the home team. And oh. now Saifidi with a little momentum stopper. He'll have a heart attack, Nathan Brown, if this continues. They should be in front, the Knights. He's just taking his eyes off the football. It's a lack of concentration from the big man. And now they have they've opened the door for the momentum to swing. Well, it's been an age since they've had the footy. The Penrith Panthers have been in. defending. See if they've got any energy. They should have. 25 metres out. See if they go straight away on the attack. What have they got from the scrum base here? Right in the middle of the field. They'll come up with something here. Kick out. Now to the left off Maloney. So can Penrith complete their first set since the 42nd minute? That's their challenge here. And they'd love to get some points as well and answer what the Knights came up with just moments ago. Merrick. An amazing opening shift from him. Just shy of 100 metres, he goes past that mark with that run. Now, Campbell Gillard scored the first try of the evening. And already in waiting for him that time. Get him on his back as well for a slow play the ball. Now Katoa has a go from dummy half. Taylor Ponga. So he's out. Oh, Maloney says, we'll just take a seven-point lead, if you don't mind. A long way out from full time, yeah. but it gets it beyond that converted try, the difference. Well, to me, that's a sign. I, I, I understand James Maloney's thinking here, going out to the seven-point lead, and it is intelligent, but it also strikes me and leaves the door open that their attack, Speedy, inside the Knights' attacking area this evening has been clunky. It has been. Katoa... Wallace, Peachy, and Maloney at times have looked lost inside that attacking 20 metre zone. Well, they haven't had the ball for so long. He kicks the field goal. They get it back now from the kickoff. So, yeah. possession all important now for the Panthers. Don't forget the second game of our doubleheader tonight. It's the Bulldogs against Parramatta renewing that rivalry. Looking forward to end by V. Gutherson. One of the great battles to look forward to in that one from ANZ Stadium on Fox League, your home of the NRL Channel 502. Geez, I'm intrigued to see why he kicked that field goal. I know it takes him out to a seven-point lead, but the, the Panthers are a side that just love to play with that confidence of attacking football. I hope to see how this unfolds. <laughs> He's a serial grand final player, as Nathan Brown described him this week. He's a winner, James Maloney, and... He feels right now that's the best chance for them to play Newcastle out of the game, but now they've coughed it up. What was that from Trent Merrin? <laughs> Must have been his sore finger there. It's an ordinary pass. They'll try and make up for it now, but Merrin. Bit of by play between Peachy and Watson there. It's been brewing. There's a bit of push and shove in the first half too, Spooty. Now, S.E.S.E. So many game-changing moments tonight. Is that another one, the adventurous pass from Merrin? Now, right quickly on Ponga. Jerome Luai getting in on that tackle and his NRL debut just out there. Gets involved again. High work rate from the 21-year-old who's been starring in reserve grade already in 2018, earning his spot. Fifth debutant already in 2018 for the Panthers. Ponga 
Delays the pass for Watson. And they scramble from the inside. Luai plays his part. And Campbell Gillard finished him off. He closed the gate there, Gillard. Doing a big effort there to get across. They look very dangerous. After we saw the Panthers turn the ball over on the halfway line, they've given ample opportunity there to the Knights. He went whack. And he's known for that, isn't he? Luke Yates, who... Went two from two, two wins, and then he got dropped back to reserve grade, and they lost last week, so Brown said, you're back in. And when he hits you, you know it. He reminds me of a Cement Gillespie and, and Anthony Colella, those sort of players <laughs> built low to the ground, and they just belt you when you run straight. Peachy feeling some solid contact. Not the singer. <laughs> he ran at Yates as well, Good. did Peachy. Ponga coming across. Make sure of the take and then puts the footwork on. Luai has made an impressive start defensively. Just got to find something here, the Newcastle Knights. Got to dig deep. Got a lot of ball. We've got to turn it into points now. Yeah, moves it on to Kenny Dow, who hasn't got a lot of ball. He nearly slips straight through. A little ankle tap at the end of it all. Gets a quick play, the ball going. They feel like they've caught the Panthers offside here. There's no penalty. The referee really ushering them back to 10 right now. They showed good discipline here to get back onside, but they're under the pump again. Well, they go high here, Newcastle. Lamb does. Chases. Ross. On Crichton. Timed it OK, but couldn't get there for the contest. Oh, another whack. Gates and Saifidi. A player who just loves tackling well, Luke you Gates. Love, you love to see this sort of effort here from the Newcastle Knights. They've got a little bit of a sniff here. It's a great defence. They need to keep it up. Katoa. And a dummy half. Collared by Fitzgibbon. Able to get an offload away. Almost forward by Maloney. That's what they're asking for. Touch judge was well placed to adjudicate. Gave it the all clear. But they are so flat here, Penrith, aren't they? And a nothing kick from Maloney, which SKD tries to turn into something. The hero in Tamworth a few weeks back just stays in the field of play. Mind you, a penalty was brewing if they kept on dragging him. Up to halfway early in the count. Essie Harold Weir and Naira is hearing the boos. He is up so early defensively. Again, he's right in front of the referee by two metres there. And the referee had his view obstructed by Harold Weir and Naira. It doesn't give a penalty and Penrith have it back. That's incredible. Right here in the commentary box, he was at least two metres standing right in front of the referee. <laughs> and now Penrith right get there, a penalty after that tackle. That is extraordinary. We've been looking at the back of his head. How didn't he see it? Ponga went for the money ball too. The cutout pass over the top. The idea was right. And here's the penalty now. Just feel a little bit of a loose arm over the top there. By the halfback, Brock Lamb. And they will be relieved, the Panthers. Have a look at them. They're in a bunch. Hands on hips. They've got a penalty in this second half. Their first. And here's Harawira Naira, who dodged a massive bullet for his team. He's been testing the referee's patience and got away with it. Now Campbell Gillard. James Maloney, all but one eye closed. Big, big bruise and shine are coming for James. Maloney to Merrin. They had so many numbers out there to the left. They come back to the open side now. Isaiah Yo, tough customer to tackle. The long striding Isaiah Yo. So Ponga says enough with those long legs. Katoa fires it out to Jerome Luai. An evasive customer himself. Says to Billy Kickout, why don't you run at Levi? On the last, which way do they go? Katoa to Maloney. Pressure put on him. Does it touch the hand of Barnett? Oh, it does. Six go. more. I don't like that one, but it looked like it came off the arm of Barnett. 
Bonus tackles for Penrith. Peachy got rid of Watson initially. Yo again. Luai just steps around one, tries to send Maloney over. He's a tricky customer, is Jerome Luai. Maybe he can lay one on here. And there's a penalty, and will they take the two here? Seven point margin right now. They will. Maloney says, let's take two. Yeah, he recognises that the Knights have had a wealth of possession in the second half. And they haven't been down here too often, the Penrith Panthers, and he knows that they're in front by seven. Here we just... go. Watch Harawira Naira right in front of the referee here. Incredible. There's three of them offside, but Harawira Naira is at least two metres in front. You talk about turning points. Knights have been shooting themselves in the foot at times, but on that occasion... They weren't able to have any room to move because they're all offside. Anyway. What about the courage of Maloney, too? Yeah. Just getting back to the plate, putting himself, his body on the line. Front rowers run there, catch and pass. He went straight and hard, wins the penalty. He's a tough competitor, he is. Probably himself and Michael Morgan, Blocker, are, are two players that just put their body on the line and charge through those holes when... A player's drifting across. You don't see too many halves do that. This is how he did it. Or maybe a bit more contact. Looked like the eye was already opened up. And that's how Barnett was ruled to have restarted the tackle count as well. So he peers through that right eye and uses the dominant left eye right now to size things up from right in front. He gave them the seven-point edge with the field goal. Now it's a nine-point buffer with 13 minutes to go. He'd do that with his eyes shut. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> what a player. Is he one of those guys that practices all the time too, Mick? Is he one of those sort yeah, of guys? Last off the field. He comes across as very relaxed and easygoing, but he's methodical with his goal kicking, uh, with his general play practice. He's got brilliant, brilliant game sense blocker to play with. He just he reads the game so well. Don't forget Parramatta against the Bulldogs at ANZ Stadium coming up right after this on Fox League. Stay with us throughout your Friday night footy. Campbell Gillard turning that shoulder. King back out there. Two number 10s head to head. Merrick, more metres for him. Don't play the ball. What's the 40-20? Has he got the angle? Not quite. But he's going to ask Ponga to bring it a long way back. Starting from their own five, if you like. And there's no way through. It's a great chase with kick out and uh, Isaiah Yo both involved there. And those three points from James Maloney just make it look so much further away. The W for the Knights. Here's King. A little bit of footwork on to run at Wallace. He's back out there for his final shift. Messi oh. Messi running back at Wallace again. Campbell Gillard was hunting a big hit. Lamb. Crichton has been well positioned to take a lot of these kicks in the second half. Luai in the dummy half roll. Martini Zelezniak's had a sensational game. Nearly 130 run metres for him. Uh, Phillips in off a wing. More complaints about no forward pass there. Now Luai. Another penalty. Second got, effort from King. He's got plenty of energy, hasn't he? Luai. Yeah. He's come on. He's added a little bit to this Panthers attack. Very good with the footy. Wins a penalty there. They'll just start to wind the clock down now. The Panthers, they get the penalty. Maloney just figuring out with Wallace what they're going to do. And winding more seconds off the clock. Absolutely. What a game manager and winner he is. Absolutely. Makes it look legit by bringing young Luai in for a chat. 
<laughs> Brought him up from third man. Yeah. Arawira and Ira moving it on to Merrick. Now Yo running an angle. A try would just about kill off Newcastle. Maloney. Flat pass for Billy Kickow from a standing start. There's no way through. Watson asking for a knock on. Wallace has a scoop from Dummy Half. Well done, Levi, to stop him. Peachy has a crack too. Hunting a double. Last tackle. He won't even go upstairs. He was that close, though, to grazing a bit of chalk. Now Maloney waits it. Harawira and Naira, they were worried about why Tenny's a and they clocked off on the other hyphen. There's the sealer from Harawira Naira. And what about the kick from Jimmy Maloney, who's closed out this game to perfection? How casual was he to take the ball there? Naira. Unbelievable. Maloney summed it up beautifully. We spoke about how much time he puts into his kicking game, and he lands it on a dime blocker. And Harawira Naira, he puts the icing on the cake here at McDonald Jones Stadium and it is all the Panthers now. He's been in everything hasn't he in the second half, especially when they've got the footy Maloney. He's the man that's orchestrated this win. After they had a lot of ball, the Newcastle Knights in the second half, Maloney's got the Panthers home. Well it wouldn't surprise me if that was exactly what he was talking about when we, when we joked about him slowing <laughs> the game down. He was so precise and barking orders to his troops. Two dummy half runs from Wallace and Pucci poised no real threat. But Maloney again, when the big moments need to be delivered for the Panthers, in 2018 he has had his hands all over them. Just got that knack of knowing how to get you home, hasn't he? Oh, absolutely. They were under the pump, the Panthers, for 25 minutes of this second half. Now they've just, just rolled the, the scoreboard over. The defence was outstanding. Their goal line defence was terrific. It was only a, a, a flash of brilliance from Brock Lamb and Ponga that opened them up. 13 point buffer. Just to add another two to it and continue his perfect night with the boot. Five from five plus the field goal for Jimmy Maloney. Yeah, they're certainly looking good, the Panthers, Speedy. Uh, I've got a crowd number for you, 14,801 here tonight at McDonald Jones Stadium. Not quite the uh, 23,000 we had here last week, but uh, at 12 degrees with such an icy breeze down here, I can't blame the fans for wanting to be uh, sitting home nice and warm on the couch. So here's Jimmy Maloney's chat. Harawira and Ira wasn't really interested, but uh, did he get the tip off at the end of it all that I'll be kicking to you? <laughs> Maybe. Worked out just fine. Looking for the collect from the kickoff. Kickout had to be brave, and then he sensed a little opportunity up the short side. Ponga's kickoff gave them half a chance, the Knights, to retrieve it. They've got a really good run of home games going right now in Newcastle, including last week, 8 out of 10 here at McDonald Jones, but they haven't made a great start to that sequence. No, they certainly haven't. They would love, we saw the vision of Mitchell Pearce in the coach's box with Nathan Brown there, marquee signing. It was a huge blow. It was an enormous blow in Tamworth when he did his pack. And in those big moments tonight, they would have loved to have had Mitchell Pearce with the ball in his hands. He was in tremendous touch. Maloney again. Little kick back inside. They let it bounce. It's going to find its way through to the Panthers again. Luai tracked it down, and they've got a fresh set of six. And a penalty, maybe. Yes, that is the call. Against Barnett, and they complain and say Wallace was going to go under the post anyway. Yeah, again, do we play advantage there? I mean, it's... The opposition player pulls him off the football, but he, he makes a genuine effort. This was the kick from Maloney. When we think back to the Addo Car try, take it off the Melbourne Storm last week. Now, Barnett holds on. He's trying to play the ball, and Wallace goes straight through there. He's untouched. I think they'd rather six points than two. Maybe they figure because it wasn't a legit play the ball, i.e. the boot didn't touch the ball, they say we can't let that go. I well, know, I just I like common <laughs> sense and I like playing advantage when he makes a genuine attempt. If he just rolls the ball or he doesn't make a genuine attempt to play the, the football, 
I understand that, but there he does. It's only the, the defence that impede him of doing, of allowing him to do what he wants to do. And as I said, I think the six points might not mean much in, in round 10, but it may mean everything come round 26 when you're chasing for and against. As it is, they're for and against. He's getting a boost tonight, though. Blocker, this will open the margin up to 17. Well, he's got a great kicking percentage too, hasn't he, Maloney? Not only a great player, what about coming in tonight, 82% kicking success. Be higher now, I'd say. Only hazard right now is the rubbish floating around in the breeze. He let that roll past and adds another two. Now, this is where the experience sets in. Well, they haven't got the Newcastle Knights now. They had the Panthers on the rack in the first 25 minutes, and then all of a sudden the momentum shifted. They couldn't go with the Panthers here in the second half. It really confused them when Maloney took the field goal. He goes seven out in front. They've dropped in a hole after that. Penrith rising to second on the live ladder right now, and Newcastle on the outside looking in right now. Going to drop to five and five. Penrith are going to be seven and three. They're starting a while, and they're doing it against the odds right now. But as Megan Barnard broke the story earlier, there was some doubt over when Cleary was going to return. Megan chatted to Cleary at the start of this second half. If you've just joined us late, and Cleary said, I'm ready for next week against the West Tigers on a Thursday night at home on Fox League. That's a great exclusive. She I love it. It's a fair share. Yeah, it's a beauty. Good on you, Megan. Phillips. Now kick out. And they get a few more points to add to that for and against. Maloney hunting a touch finder, and he'll get it. The game manager. Yeah, too good. Too good. He's not chasing any big plays or any big points now. The Panthers number seven. He's just steering his side home. He come to Newcastle to do a job, and they've done just that, the Panthers. The thing with Maloney, he gets better as the game goes on. He, he just, just takes control, he just gets it, Block. I don't know how any how better to describe it. He just he's just a born footballer. Right. Stay he lives right, for the big in, moments. He's not overawed by any occasion. Never flustered when a side's decimated with injury. Always confident in his own ability. And he is in stellar form for the Panthers. And he'll be combining again with Nathan Cleary next week. Get that combination going and try and impress the origin selectors too. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how Nathan fits back into this side. I mean, he's a wonderful player, but I think James's football, he looks like he's really relished owning the Panthers football team and their attacking structures. We well, might have to take a back seat when he comes back. <laughs> yeah, well, I think James is so adaptable, Blocker. He can fit into any structures, and you know, we saw in those opening rounds when you know, it was Nathan's turn to dominate, especially against Parramatta. You know, Parramatta blew them off the park, 14-0 in round one, but then Nathan, it was his time, and, and Jimmy just got on the back of it. And I think it's a combination that can have wonderful success in the years to come. Ponga back inside. The Knights hunting a consolation try here. Levi looking for the options, goes to Ponga once more. They want a forward pass to Barnett. It's play on for now. Miracle pass. Can they get a try? Can the roster get it down? Well, they've turned him on his back. Unbelievable. This is he is... claiming it? He is, and that's a miracle try. Brilliant handling and the flick back inside. How did he do that? Well, Barnett, he's come up with some huge moments this evening. He set up Connor Watson with a miraculous pass in the first half. There's nothing doing, Danny, other than Ponga chancing his arm. He's got two defenders on him and somehow gets a miraculous pass around the back to Suyo. And Ross as well with two defenders on him gets the football down. Consolation try for the Newcastle Knights, but a bloody good one. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's just a little bit too late. I was expecting it. They've rushed the kick too. The halfbacks converted that in Brock Lamb. And the Rostog doesn't he like getting over the stripe. 
the chest puffs out. Didn't really celebrate that one with much gusto, though. They know the game has gone, and they know they've had their opportunities tonight. Don't forget, there's two more competition points up for grabs tonight. Stay with us on Fox League as Canterbury play host to Parramatta, the co-tenants at ANZ Stadium right now, head-to-head -head right after this game. The Morris brothers against Bevan French, four and against Moses, who will get a priceless victory tonight on Fox League. Clock has stopped. Parramatta last week racked up the points late and nearly forced Golden Point, didn't they? So, an 11 point margin right now. They need two converted tries in the last two minutes to snatch it. The optimistic Knights fans are thinking. Yes, he is. <laughs> Henrik did it last year, didn't they? Against Canberra in Bathurst with a similar time frame. Matt Moylan. Yeah. This is the star of the show that night. I think the Knights are one strike player away from being a great side. I think they're going to go out in the market. A oh, centre. Yeah. I think they need a centre. A strike centre. Put the Ross dog back out on the wing. Right now it appears they're targeting middle forwards. Garrett Wallace was having a tour of the place midweek. Hoping to lure him and hoping to get Tim Glasby as well. So that's the focus of Nathan Brown right now. But Blocker gives him some more advice on what recruitment is needed. I think it's fair call, Blocker. I think you're spot on the money. They need to score. That's the problem. It's, a, it's three out for a ponga. They go high here. Not enough, enough depth in it from Lamb, but they let it bounce, and Kickow retrieves it again. He's got some hands and skill for a big man, and they were in front of the kicker, and inside the 10 as a result here. I suppose they did go out in the marketplace, and they got Moga, but he, he's been injured, so... Yeah. That hopefully, hurt, didn't it? Hopefully he can make his way back. Scored a terrific try as he did his knee, and he was in he was in great form up in Brisbane uh, last year. So that was a big blow, and now they've lost Mitchell Pierce, the creator, on the back of it. Kalen Pong has been terrific in stepping up. Nathan uh, Nathan Brown would love to have those two men that we've mentioned back in his football team. And sadly, the dreaded ACL again for Tau Tau Moga, who's been through it so many times. And Maloney's had enough. <laughs> but he shut this one out. He took the field goal very early on, midway through this second half, just to open up a seven-point margin. Saifidi coughed up the ball as well when Newcastle had a bit of momentum, and after that, Penrith just took over and picked up another victory, their seventh of the season. They're into second spot on the NRL ladder right now, and Newcastle are searching for their next win as they stay in 10th with 10 points right now. Full-time at McDonald Jones Stadium, Penrith 29, Newcastle 18.